But coming back to the debate on the wellhead security improvements, the resolutions, um, and just who moved and seconded it? It was moved and seconded, Councillor Coulter, Councillor Clearwater. So um, I'm, I'm just mindful of the fact that, that Pauline just hasn't come back into the room. So, um, Phil, would you like to start off the debate on this? Well, yes, happy to. Um, look, I, I think that, um, in fact, as a council, we're at a, a good stage with this. I think that um, staff have done a lot of work. Also, as councillors, we've had the opportunity to actually talk with Environment Canterbury and the DHB at our water forums. We, we are getting some very good information. And it, se it seems to me that um, it, gradually um, the, the, you know, the, 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 the best option in terms of the mechanisms w will emerge. And we, we're having those developed at, at, um, at, with the different reports we receive. So I don't think that this is like an ad hoc type um, process at all. I, I think that clearly we, we as a council are receiving a lot more information ar around our water quality than we were before, and we're taking all, all the, the responsibility. So I think, in fact, we're, we're ensuring that there is good governance around this and that we'll achieve our objective of in, ensuring that we have our, our water safe. But I'll leave the uh, fuller comments to Pauline. Uh, Dion? Uh, I, I wanted to talk just a bit quickly about um, the paper in front of us. I think that you know we just have to get this done. We just have to sort of divert what we can to actually make sure it's done. Uh, especially as we do the long-term plan, there's going to be some implications around that. But I think you know when we talk about priorities, this is one of the priorities that we actually need to focus on, and actually really have a soul search about you know where where other priorities sit and how we actually manage that into the 10 year and 30 year long in infrastructure strategy. But I mean, when it comes to this, I, I just wanted to sort of, I need to get this out off my chest, is I think we're getting a bit duped by this lobby uh, that's, that's out there in, the, in New Zealand. I mean, there's a, there's a New Zealand group who are lobbying to have permanent chlor treatment of all water supplies, council and private. And the people who are informing people about stuff are linked to this and it's causing so much fuss and undermining the work that we're doing. So we need to be very clear about the work that we're doing and our and, and the work that you know other partners are doing and also the supply of our water so that we don't find ourselves in this battle between what a lobby group wants because if you follow the money you can see clearly what the intention is. It's disgusting. Um, you know, we need to get to the facts of what's going on, and they, you know, if they should actually just come out and say this is what we're thinking. But anyway, we need to be very clear about what we're doing here. I do look forward to in May getting the the, the timeline, and actually, so we can tell our people what's going on, when it's going to happen, and what we're doing in the future. Um, Aaron. Um, yeah, I. Uh I'm OK to receive the information and uh, have a look through it and, and, and look at our ways forward. And it does feel like a bit of a gun to the head, um, what we're doing. And I just want to start by saying, I, because I do sit on the DHB and I've sat through seminars there and I walked, went to the Water NZ presentation and uh, we've got all the seminars here as well. Uh, and I did ask um, Alistair Humphreys about people getting sick from Christchurch water and his answer was no one has ever got sick from Christchurch water or not to the point that it comes up in uh, at hospital. Anyway, uh, that is the position of the DHB. <coughs> so it was strange when the DHB were asking us to look at uh, uh, disinfecting our water, um, because disinfecting is the term that Water NZ use, which really was just about the legislation that applies to the delivery of water and treatment of water. It doesn't actually pertain to the quality of the water we're drinking. And this is the whole problem we have here. Um, Water NZ are behind the re recommendations that have gone to the government, there's 53 recommendations. If they are adopted by the government, um, I'm not going to use the C word, it's not necessarily corruption, but it, at best it's a scam. Um, because there's a term coined in 1974 by Ann Kruger called rent seeking, S-E-E-K-I-N-G. Look it up, um, this is rent seeking at its best, that's where particular industries set up a situation, <clears throat> and it's done really well now with the media, where you scare people enough that they will throw a lot of money at it. Water 
in New Zealand is going to be worth billions of dollars because people are going to pay to protect themselves from something that doesn't exist, and that is no one in Christchurch has ever got sick from our water. Uh, I do have confidence in uh, the staff that deliver our water. I don't have confidence in putting disinfectant in the water as is, as is in the recommendations to the government. Um, I hope that we never do permanently. I realise it's there now. I didn't support that and I don't support us moving towards um, doing it permanently. Um, it is, uh, I think, uh, revolting, I think is the term we're looking for here, to quote Vicky Buck. Um, I, the water at my house smells like a swimming pool. Um, it's quite good when I clean out my pool, I just fill it up, I don't bother chlorinating it, it never goes green, I can't work out why. Um, the kids smell like they've been to a pool when they dive in it, so that's a good thing, I suppose. <coughs> but the, because the water tastes like that, we have other issues that will be coming up, and that is our city will now be creating a lot of extra plastic waste from water bottles being sold. You'll notice in garages and supermarkets, water bottle displays have gone to the front because they're moving really well. And of course, uh, lots of sugar will be added to our water to make it more palatable for the people of Christchurch that are used to drinking the most pure water in the world, which it currently isn't. So look up rent seeking. I, I just plead with you all to look it up. It's a, it's a legitimate term and it's, uh, and it's what's going on here. Uh, Glenn. Thank you. Uh, obviously, our staff and elected members, my colleagues here, we're taking this matter very uh, seriously. Uh, part of that is uh, curiosity is beginning to grow, and I'll come back to that later. I wonder whether we could, if we haven't done so already, uh, explore looking at map updates for residents on Newsline so that they can see the work progressing on the, on the wellheads. That could provide some degree of comfort. The um, risk about mandatory treatment was already signalled. It's another point I want to make today. Before today's front page of the press, so if we look at page uh, rather 6.20, that was already there. That the, that the slight risk of uh, permanent uh, chlorination already exists. So in that sense, it's not new news. Uh, permanent uh, chlorination um, could cut both ways. So uh, it, 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 in terms of the four uh, well-beings, uh, some would see that as um, uh, obviously a, a clear kind of um, candidate, if you like, for, you know, social community wellbeing, but it could also go the other way in terms of the effect it will have uh, socially on our residents. In my experience, goalposts are usually uh, dug into the ground and they don't move. Uh, I'm now seeing goalposts on wheels and I have a sense in which we're part of a catch me if you can process whereby the goalposts po keep shifting from one field to the other. And so back to the first point, uh, curiosity is beginning to grow and a question that I have is who stands to gain if permanent chlorination was to proceed? So we know about the risks on the other side of the equation, we're taking those seriously, but who stands to gain? And some of my colleagues, Dion and Aaron, are starting to ask that as well. And I think we need to keep asking that. I have a sense in which we might be being waterboarded by the New Zealand Water Board. So keep asking the questions. We're elected to ask them. We're elected to take risks seriously. We're also elected to ask questions. And I implore my colleagues to, to keep doing that. Thank you. Um, uh, Tim. Thank you. We are where we are, and it's not so much the goalposts keep moving, it's they seem to be floating around the place. Um, we've, it's essential that we uh, work, work, walk hand in hand with the the, um, the DHB and the Chief Officer of Health, Alistair Humphreys, because at the end of the day, the new standards of the wellheads that we're required to do will be a good thing. They're, they're, um, they're going to be um, better for the future, better fu future proofing. And as uh, it was mentioned before, there has been no one recorded that has got sick from our water, as um, Aaron pointed out, through the District Health Board. So our water is tested constantly. It's good water, it's pure water. But to get us in front of the government, where if they are or when they are required to change the rules yet again, 
if we are hand in hand with the uh, Chief Officer of Health saying that we can be exempt and confidently so, then that is where we have to go to get to keeping our pure water of the future. So we can debate all we want, but we all know where we want to be and where our people want to be, and it's about getting there as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Thank you. Yanni? Okay. Um, I'm really concerned. We've heard today from staff that basically the risk, this is based on risk, uh, and that in the 100 years or so, um, we haven't had any breaches into, or no recorded breaches into our wellheads that have caused us concern. So what we know as a city is our biggest risk is our reticulated system post-earthquake, post-skirt, who didn't repair things properly in terms of the standard that I would expect in a modern, resilient city. And we've had the graphs from our staff previously that show the number of water uh, mains that have been breaking because of the lack of repair. So if you were actually weighing this up in a sensible approach, spending money where the biggest risk is rather than where the hysteria is, you would not be spending money doing uh, what we're being asked to do or looking at doing. You would actually spend it fixing the areas where we are getting uh, albeit um, you know, fairly isolated, but we are getting some issues of things getting into the reticulated system. And that's what really concerns me. So I really welcome uh, the fact that some of my colleagues have today questioned what's behind this? Who's going to benefit from this? Uh, because it seems to me very clear that there's an agenda here that's building up in New Zealand, uh, and that is to basically take water away from local communities being able to make decisions about it and to put it into non-elected uh, corporate and probably um, private structures that mean that local people don't have a say in how water is handled. So, you know, I think this is a really delicate issue. Um, it's really clear that there's a whole bunch of games going on in terms of trying to back us into a position, and I'm really not happy about that. I think you know the reality is that the Havelock North hysteria that's been caused is totally unfounded in terms of history in Christchurch. From our past experience, uh, the the risk has been incredibly low, uh, and where we've got much greater risk, we're diverting resources away, and in the next 30 years, we're spending money to try and fix that higher risk. Well, in the short term, in the immediate. We're spending that money on this that is lo has got a lower risk. It just, to me, makes no sense at all. I think we really need government to actually start to communicate with us about what they're doing and what their thinking is. And I am concerned that we're being asked to spend a lot of money um, for something that, yeah, seems to be um, just doesn't make sense from a common sense point of view. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the, uh, the reports from the staff and the work that's been done has been excellent. I think the information that came through the Inf Infrastructure Committee was excellent. Um, it seems to me quite basically quite simple, that we have three pillars that make our water secure for us to drink. Uh, one is secure boreheads, which is what we're dealing with now. Second is the regular testing every 24 hours, which is more frequently than is required. And the third is the geohydraulic modelling of the water um, and the protection of the purity of the water underground, so in our aquifers. So those are the three pillars upon which we base our security of, of safe drinking water. Instead of just looking at one option in this report for fixing the boreheads, we are now looking at four potential options, fix below the ground, put them above the ground, UV and or potential closing or cutting off of, of some bores. I think that's very sensible, that we look at all of the options across the network to see what works, what works best in each area. And I think that's a very sensible, rational way for us to go, and I think it's much better than just looking at the first, the one option of fixing below the ground. Um, so I like where we've gotten to in terms of um, what, what we're doing. In terms of where we're going, it's very clear to me that what we're doing is seeking within 12 months to get back to an unchlorinated water supply. And that seems to me to be incredibly basic and actually almost part of the identifying factors for uh, ident an identifying factor for people in Christchurch. It's interesting to see in the submissions that have come so far 
how um, important people regard their drinking water to be and how important it is for them to feel that it is pure but not chlorinated. Um, so we're making, what we're doing is very clear to me, we're making our boreheads safer so that we can get an <coughs> exemption. If we don't do it, we have no chance in all, at all, assuming the government does decide that you have to get an exemption. We don't know what the government has yet decided because it hasn't yet been decided. But the Havelock North uh, inquiry has put some interesting spanners in all sorts of works. Um, yes, we do want the Medical Officer of Health on our side, beside us, when we and if we have to make an application for an exemption. So I think that's incredibly clear. I like the fact, Leanne, that you're going to fight tooth and nail, and I notice one of your nails <laughs> is already slightly chipped um, just before. <laughs> um, I think the agenda that others have spoken about is very clear. There is a very clear agenda, particularly from the guy quoted in this morning's press, Ian Rabbits, um, that, and he said it quite publicly, he does not want elected councils controlling water. Uh, people who are elected do not know anything about water and should not be controlling it. Um, and he's totally opposed to any city having an exemption. So he's very forthright in his views. They're not necessarily, in fact they're definitely not, the views of the people of Christchurch um, who drink the water and who want it to be safe. So I think what we're doing in terms of the work on making the um, secure boreheads through a, through a package that means that we get the best outcome at the best cost for our community um, and within uh, and still aiming for the 12 month period is very sensible so I like all and I like the additional recommendations that we've put as well yeah. Andrew um, yeah I mean this clearly is one of the most important issues facing this council um, is something that needs to be resolved there are um, essentially two different um, areas of consideration here, one of which is the requirement for temporary chlorination until we get the wellheads back up to standard, the other is the government's response to the Havelock North report, and the two at some point may become combined, but for the moment we need to do what we said it was we were going to do and work with our staff and advisors to do that, which is to get the chlorine out of the water within the 12 months um, that we originally indicated that would be the case. And um, the recommendations that we've got in front of us certainly give us enough um, scope and flexibility to continue to work to get the chlorine out of the water within the 12 months. We're hearing loud and clear from the people of Christchurch that that's not what they want, and we know that as elected representatives, that that's not what we want either, and we've made that clear. Um, but, um, you know, obviously keeping an eye on um, government recommendations and changes coming out of the um, Havelock North inquiry, um, I think the recommendations we've got in front of us are not inconsistent with steps that we might need to take in that context as well. But the message loud and clear is that we continue to work to resolve the temporary chlorination issue, get the chlorine out of the water as quickly as possible. Yep, um, Rafe? Did you want? No. no? Um, uh, Jimmy? Okay, yes. <coughs> I think the uh, risk is opportunity because why the moment I still concern, you know, a council should uh, strengthen the communication because if we back to the, the January, in that time we particular have a kind of announcement of all the problems, mainly focus on the below ground the waterhead. That's 103. If we repair, we have a further Im improvement. This one can be dealing. And also we particular lungs of this kind of the temporary coordination water will be within the 12 months. But if we recently we re review the uh, media, you know, different uh, expert and uh, different uh, view, etc. So we need to speed up the progress of the paragraph six. You know, if we bring all those uh, possible solutions to the ITE, we need to immediately, you know, open uh, to the public. Not then, because why the because public community they they hear from a different source. You know, they 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 more or less you know lost the confidence to 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 the council. This my uh, at least the my view. So how to transcend the uh, communication, that's the uh, most uh, important. And also we are all aware, majority of the people, not only in Christchurch, but the probably in the Canterbury area, we, we, we are very proud. We have sold the best water uh, uh, in, uh, worldwide, and uh, how to keep it. So the mayor mentioned would like to 
stand against this one, you know, stand for this one. That's very good. But we still need a kind of sufficient information, comprehensive information to, to support this one. Then we can challenge, we can argue or negotiate with the central government. If all the kind of nationwide would like to lease a permanent uh, mandatory the, the, the coordination water, but uh, why the crisis can't agree, we are exempt. Let me speak a bit clearly and the face to the public. Uh, David? Did... Um, look, this is a resource that we've had for forever. It's our water, and I'm absolutely confident uh, in the approach that we're taking at the moment uh, to, to ensure that we become absolutely compliant um, and really just revert back to a non-chlorinated uh, source of water. It's the best source of water in the, in the country, in the world, and I think uh, every citizen in Christchurch uh, wants to get back to a chlorine-free environment as quickly as possible. Anne? So, <clears throat> we've taken our beautiful untreated water for granted. As a result of the Havelock North outbreak, the standards used to test our water changed, and suddenly we were at risk of having unsecured wellheads leading to unsafe water, drinking water. The confidence in our pristine, untreated water was questioned as we were faced with a very low risk of contamination. This was the first threat to the best water in the world. As a council, we responded to this by making the difficult decision to temporarily chlorinate for the next 12 months while our wellheads are checked. And our staff are working incredibly hard on this. We are now, however, faced with another possible threat as central government hints at mandating having to, uh, every drinking water supply to chlorinate. I believe our responsible and quick um, actions to tempor temporarily chlorinate communicates to central government that we are perfectly capable of managing our own water supply. Thank you very much. Um, our, um, our response to the initial threat <laughs> has actually, is actually going to work in our, in, to our advantage because it's moved us towards looking at other solutions. We're actually um, along the path to exploring long-term treatment of our water using UV, for example. So we are in a much better position to argue our case against having to chlorinate than we would have been without our first uh, water crisis. If central government directs us to chlorinate, we will stand with our communities in the trenches and fight tooth and nail, as our mayor had said, against permanent chlorination. This is our city, our water, and permanent chlorination doesn't wash with me. Very good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie. Did, did you want to contribute? No. Sarah? Mike? <laughs> you could move, move, move Sarah's mic face. Or, yeah. It's like QI. And Alan I, I, goes. I think, I think most of my fellow colleagues have actually said everything I was sort of going to say. But I just sort of want to touch on a little bit what Councillor Manju was talking about. Um, you know, this is two, two issues we, we have here, two serious issues. Um, <laughs> one that obviously we've got a 12 month time frame uh, around to try and fix, and that's our getting our secured status back, um, which is really, really important. But obviously, the more important thing is to make sure that actually moving, moving forward and, and into the future, we actually have water that's not um, permanently chlorinated. Um, to me, that is, is the ultimate goal. Um, and so we need to make sure we actually do things right, not quickly. Um, we need to get all the advice, all the information, and, and make sure that the decisions we make to actually give us the best possible way of, of maintaining our, our pure, clean water is, is taken. And I would hate to be spending money, um, a lot of money, because this is going to cost millions of dollars, 
when potentially we're, we're actually missing the, the point of what needs to be done, and, and when that information comes to us, we're, we've wasted a lot, a lot of that, that money. Um, I do support the work we're doing and, and making sure that we get everything done. Our, our water supply, our drinking water supply, it, it needs to be that needs to be gold plated. You know, it comes before a covered stadium, it comes before repaired roads, it comes before cycleways. It is one of our best assets the city has. You know, it sets us apart from other cities in New Zealand, probably the whole of the, the world. Um, it's what we pride ourselves in. And, and you know, the, the government's obviously going to set a direction soon. And if we have a possibility of ensuring that our water remains pure and clean, um, and, that, and that's through an exemption. We need to make sure if we do get that glimmer of hope, hope we grab hold of it and we, we take it. It is so important for this city to set ourselves apart from everyone else and maintain the water that we've cherished for such a long time, the water that no one has ever got sick from. Before I come, because you're going to close the debate, Pauline, I just wanted to add one other thing to uh, the comments that I made earlier, and that is, is that the... Um, the, the, the very person who said that he would require us to chlorinate the water if we had not made the decision to chlorinate the water was the same person who had the authority to issue a boil water notice. He didn't. And he didn't for a reason. So I think people need to keep everything in perspective here. This is about... The, the, the big guns, and can I just say that, and it's to quote, uh, and I don't even know who said it first, but if all your, uh, if the only tool that you've got is a hammer, then all of your problems start looking like nails. And if the only tool that you've got is the full treatment of water, then the only solution looks like chlorine, smells like chlorine, tastes like chlorine. And that's what we need to focus our attention on, but I agree with Mike and Raf that it is about ensuring that our pristine water supply that sits underneath the ground, precious that it is, is able, capable of being delivered to people um, in accordance with the standards that will be applied. Um, and that means that we have to do this anyway. So I think investing in um, assessing the UV option is something that we must do, and that's why I was very pleased that council staff had proceeded to do that work uh, as a result of the recommendations that came out of the, the ITI committee. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with where we are at the moment. I'm not pleased that others have entered into the, into the fray with comments that are designed specifically to um, create fear-mongering and concern in the general population. So, uh, and another comment that I'll just finally make, it's my third final comment, um, and that is this, that very early on in the piece, and it's really to pick up something Aaron said, very early on in the piece, and I mentioned this to the press reporter when he came the other day, uh, somebody said to me, follow the money. If you want to know the answer to the problem that you're confronted with as a city, follow the money. There, is, there are big dollars involved in chlorinating water supplies, and the advice that we are receiving is based on those who believe there is no alternative but to chlorinate. And there is a lot of money that sits in behind uh, that desire. So, uh, but we have an obligation as a council to make sure that our um, structures and our delivery systems are second to none. And uh, I believe that even despite the earthquakes that we've been through, the processes that we have in place in the city are second to none. So I'll hand over to you, Pauline, to close the debate. Well, look, that's uh, pretty tough to follow that one. But um, look, we. We as a council have a wellhead renewal programme, and it's not just since Havelock North. It's a rolling programme, uh, 34.1 million in our LTP. We also have stringent testing, as Vicky's alluded to, and it's far more than is actually required. But we have willingly taken learnings from Havelock North, and we're upgrading our infrastructure according to stricter standards, even though we've had no transgressions. That staff will remove chlorination from the pumps on, on a, from the well from the pumps on a case by case timeline, 
as their signed off is secure. And um, the, the report coming back to um, Council in May will include a multi-criteria analysis around the four options, including the 12-month time frame and affordability, and Vicky's alluded to those four options, but it's not one or the other, it's a combination of a, sort of a pick and mix between them. Um, so we're chlorinating at a lighter degree, we're lucky there, and we have, therefore have less residual chlorine in the system. Our investigations into UV, UV is welcome, and we'll have more information next month. And I'd like to congratulate staff for investigating this. Staff are doing an incredible job stepping up to this program, and we need to acknowledge this, and we already have generally, but they're under so much pressure given the speed with which this has blown up. The resolution before us today allows us to continue the remediation and upgrade work to our wellheads. And as I said previously, it is right that we do this. It is sound investment in our infrastructure. It's improving resilience of our network. And it will put us in good stead should Christchurch City Council ever be put in a position to request an exemption for mandatory chlorination. And I trust the people of Christchurch have got the message that this council wants our pure water to stay pure and that they will support us as being the organisation that makes this decision, not an independent regulator. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much. Right, we'll move on to the 